गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन दैट वॉज अ फैंटास्टिक इंट्रोडक्शन थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर दैट एंड थैंक यू मैम फॉर ऑनरिंग मी एंड आई थैंक द इंस्टीट्यूट फॉर हैविंग मी हियर टू टॉक अबाउट द सब्जेक्ट एंड दिस इज अ वेरी नाइस एटमोसफियर टू बी सो आई विदाउट फर्दर आई डू आई स्टार्ट कैन आई कीप दिस so without further ado i'll uh, start on the the subject directly <coughs> excuse me so uh i started working on uh, music in uh, adappan period and other ancient periods in india in 2011 and since then i've been working on this and uh, uh when i uh, first started uh, uh, in this in this area the first thing that i came to uh, understand that we had a big problem in indian uh, in the history of indian music that we don't know much about the history and the evolution of uh, the music and musical instruments the musical tradition in india although our civilization we say it is so thousands of year old and all that but we we don't know much about the the evolution of music uh, as as uh, as such um, so from uh, from there it started and uh, uh, me being a musician uh, first and foremost my uh, understanding of the subject or the objectives uh, with this uh, research was were not only the to know about the instruments but also uh, probably to recreate the instruments and uh, find out what kind of music is possible with them and uh, use them in in uh, music today in, in popular music productions so that they can there there can be an actual revival of the instruments instead of just uh, theoretical uh, framework we create to understand them because uh, in creativity and in music there is uh, there is nothing like uh, this instrument is of that period you cannot use it in this period that doesn't happen like that we can use uh, anything creatively whatever uh, we we use in things uh, in music production today which are not at all musical instrument to begin with and we use them to make music uh, we can use anything that create sounds we use that we use spoons we use uh, utensils we use many things so these but these are the real instruments these are the part of the evolution of our uh, musical history so the the as you can see on the screen we had uh, the the objectives i had was one of one obviously before first of all you have to discover and understand and learn them and uh, for that uh, we used archaeological records iconography toy forms of instruments likely non perishable parts of instrument which are found uh, i'll talk about them in just a moment as well as comparative study from uh, of the instrument from uh, Uh, not only from harappan uh, uh, sites as well as the places with which harappan traded because when there is a trade when people move uh, their culture go with them uh, without uh, any other for without any other reason uh, because people have all kinds of uh, rituals they have religious practices marriages birth child birth that music is part of everything uh, so Uh, that is uh, natural to think that if people will go to other places their culture will go up with them so collectively we have identified about uh, 20 musical instruments from harappan period i'll talk about them in just a moment then uh, we, have, we have already recreated uh, some of the uh, harappan instruments uh, about uh, 10 10 of them these are the early prototypes i'll show them in the moment and we, of course i intend to fully recreate many of more many more of them so i'll play a video uh, before i move ahead i play a music video where you will see the prototypes of the instruments we have created till now and you will also see them in uh, fusion uh, with a with the full orchestra uh, that as i mentioned in the beginning because with, that is the only way these instruments can come back to life there is no other way uh, in my understanding of music industry and music uh, as such that uh, unless we find ways to use them in uh, modern music Uh, it will not happen
Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, so you uh, saw all uh, many many instruments uh, which uh, people in tribal kind of costumes playing. Uh, the, the the very surprising thing uh, would be not uh, I won't say surprising actually, but interesting thing is that the the continuity of the instruments. Apart from one or two things, most of them are still continuing all over India in a variety of uh, evolved forms and uh, things. Uh, of course, harp and lyre category disappeared from India completely at, at a later period, not in the in the Harappan time, but in the far later time than that. And uh, the use of a uh, pottery system in the in the making of uh, musical instrument uh, probably is the pottery system is probably the most important. Uh, it has played the most important part in the manufacture of musical instruments uh, in the in the drum uh, variety of drum instruments in India. As we see till today, tabla, for example, is ultimately a kettle drum. It is a pot with a with a, with leather covered on it. Uh, similar to uh, instruments uh, mentioned in many ancient literature, for example, Dumdupi in Vedic literature is a kettle drum, uh, which is a huge uh, metallic vessel with leather covered on it. So, pottery system uh, contributed a lot to the the manufacture of musical instruments. Mridangam, uh, as we we know, Mrida Ang, probably basically a uh, earthen uh, pot of a different shape with leather covered on both the sides. <clears throat> so uh, I'll I'll get into some of the evidence which we have found till now. Uh, Archaeomusical. I'll I'll just give one 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 more important anecdote here. Not anecdote, but uh, archaeomusicology or musicology as a whole is it, it is inherently multidisciplinary. Uh, when when you get into uh, musicology, you you don't know what you are going to encounter because let's say for a, for an ancient culture. You, the, we have to rely on archaeology for the evidence. Uh, if we are studying names of the instrument of any any culture, then uh, linguistics uh, get into the in, into the consideration because names belong to a language, and we have to study the language itself. Then, uh, manufacture the material used in the manufacture of musical instruments also bring many more subjects uh, in the in the discussion. So, in in, uh, in evidence in Harappan archaeology, we have uh, found a harp, a harp a arched harp, a, uh, an instrument shaped like a bow uh, that is found on the seal. Uh, it is it is also part of a script. Uh, vessel flutes, which are found miniaturized as toy vessels. Toy vessels are very famous objects. We all uh, know them. I am sure uh, in a, in the lecture before just before this, uh, he uh, showed uh, toy vessels to us. Uh, long drums, as you saw in the video, uh, are also found on seal. Damru is also part of the script. Uh, in stringed category, we have uh, multiple specimen of uh, tuning pegs. I'll just show you with the pictures in a moment. And we also have instruments like uh, rattles and shakers. Uh, multiple of the terracotta specimen have found of them. Uh, 
so this is a seal which depicts arched harp it is a symbol in the script also uh, this is the seal which shows a long battle drum near the tiger a man standing near the tiger playing the playing the instrument there i'll just use this pointer that one <coughs> here these are the drums which i showed in the in the video and the costume they are playing that is uh, uh, some tribal costume that i uh, i was studying on tribal music and i found this tradition of headgears continuing there so i have used that these are the uh, the toy whistles which are found in, in the upper picture and these are the continue, uh, still continuing instruments in sindh this one in gujarat this one uh and these are the toy whistles from harappan period these are the real instrument they can play the melody quite uh, complete melodies uh the only difference between the harappan toys and modern uh, instrument is this number of holes except that it is practically the same thing so harappans could also put more holes in that and so uh, probably what we have found is a toy but there could be these instrument present there now these are the uh, as you can see we uh, use uh, show, shown in the picture with arrows these are the tuning pegs now tuning pegs them they don't make any sound by the way they are just pegs uh, which are used to uh, tie the string on one end of the instrument and uh, this end uh, this can be the tuning can be changed you tie it more uh, tighten it more the pitch of the instrument will go up you loosen it pitch will go down uh, and this is present in majority of indian instrument uh, such tuning pegs are this is very peculiar to indian instruments uh, left is sindhi sindhi sarangi upper one is the sitar here is the sarinda similar can be found in rudravina and uh, countless indian instruments and these are the some of the harappan specimen found which are uh, pegs made from terracotta as you can see their shape is still very similar to the uh, the, the modern uh, tuning pegs and uh, but we went further to to do to uh, to do a comparative study now more harappan pegs yeah here you can uh, see on the left there is harappan specimen on the right there is a modern uh, tuning peg of of a sitar which is used for some years i took it from a musician and as you can see the lower half of both both the specimen are damaged more than the upper because this is the part that goes inside the body of the instrument and it is uh, constantly rotated therefore that part gets damaged more than the upper part due to continuous uh, rotation of the peg let it be here okay so uh, secondly there are string marks uh, above just above the the lower damage half uh, here you can see on this arapan peg and here you can see on the uh, the, the modern peg the of course uh, these the harappan marks are slightly wider probably they uh, with the time also but uh, mo most uh, mostly it is because of the type of string used in those times it is most likely that they used gut uh, strings which are still used by the way in sarangi in ravanhatta and in many other instruments we use gut instrument uh, gut strings so that will uh, leave a little bit wider mark of the string than the modern uh, metallic uh, uh, strings but it is remarkable to see that continuity uh, you it is really remarkable it's, it's so the the, the 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 difference in time in between both the, these pegs is around 4500 years or something like that <laughs> but uh, whatever evidence uh, i discussed just now and there are some more we have also found a, a sound box of a, a lute uh, made from terracotta but still for a civilization like harappa uh this is very little i mean we are talking about a urban civilization people who made planned cities and they sent ships to all over the world and they uh, uh, made um, uh, drainage system and uh, water supply man water management systems uh, it is it is quite uh, obvious that they had uh, uh, comparable uh, musical systems uh, as that of the any other uh, contemporary civilization but there are problems in the harappan uh, records that uh, makes it difficult for us to identify them one of them is the perishable nature of the instruments uh, many the, the the material used in the manufacture of the instrument are mostly perishable in nature such as wood and leather uh, gut strings or any even metallic strings will not survive for this long but the most important point here is the the the, the absence of uh, big structures like central palaces 
most importantly the elaborate elite uh, burial uh, as we find in egypt and uh, mesopotamia now there uh, uh, in fact most of we m- most of the knowledge we have about egypt and mesopotamia are from their burial uh, burials the the pyramids and the, uh, the burials uh, the c- cemeteries in uh, mesopotamia but here because we uh, probably did not have that kind of tradition and we still don't have uh, that is one place where we could find more evidence but that place is absent so on top of that the, the nature of the seals is also standardized i mean uh, on the seal you all you have is uh, some animal motif and a st- small string of uh, harappan script and uh, nothing else so it doesn't tell anything about music the the nature of seals is such not only the mu- music but any other aspect of life you don't get from harappan seals there are not much narrative seals or uh, stuff like that but as i mentioned in the beginning there are still uh, uh, other avenues for get to, to get more knowledge because the cult- when people move culture move with them so uh, mesopotamia uh, was is one of the most important uh, place to study in this in this uh, respect because we had a, a very elaborate trade it is well established uh, by evidence uh, we had the peop- we were exporting uh, precious goods to them exotic animals you can read from the the slide but uh, we had uh, trade of uh, precious semi precious stones metal wood timber for construction uh, ships were going and uh, wooden furniture is co- consistently mentioned coming from maluha and uh, royal furniture people are men- men- maluans are mentioned as overseers of uh, temple in charge of scribes uh, craftsperson and craftsperson keepers and financer financers of sacred gardens uh, and uh, traders transporting cereals for the temples etc et so uh, uh, so it is quite likely that there was a certain population of harappans uh, settled in mesopotamia and as we know from the evidence uh, that uh, probably there were harappan settlements trade enclaves or maybe uh, manufacturing uh, units established in mesopotamia who were taking raw material from india and uh, manufacturing goods there so due to possible presence of harappan population it can be surmised quite easily that uh, their music also reached there in some way or the other uh, and even for no other reason i i mentioned now on the other hand uh, uh, situation back home was quite different uh, uh, while i'll just quote one one uh, expert here mashim vidal uh, on the basis of present evidence i'll just read it out it is more likely that although we have ascertained that indian groups traveled traded and settled in the west sumerians did not travel directly to the coast or plains of the indus nor they settled at least in substantial groups in the indus cities uh, this is uh, similar uh, conclusions are uh, drawn by many many scholars i won't uh, repeat them so this uh, situation forces us to uh, kind of conclude that Uh, any significant mesopotamian impact on local musical traditions in uh, harappan sites is quite unlikely of course there can be some exchanges happening but uh, uh, any significant impact is little unlikely now before moving ahead i'll just uh, talk about one important and very interesting aspect of indian cultural thought uh, the artistic thought of indian uh, civilization as a whole that is the use of zoomorphism and anthropomorph- anthropomorphism zoomorphism would be the uh, use of animal uh, shapes in the art form and anthropomorphism would be the mix uh, mixing the human and uh, uh, animal uh, traits together and creating uh, like human animal kind of uh, beings the same is present in uh, musical instrument uh, as well as in the costumes of the musicians uh in harappan seals we see zoomorphism at its uh, i mean peak in a way and same is uh, uh, present if in the later indian culture look at our gods uh, all of them have uh, some animal with them like as their companion uh, many gods are half animal half human so and many animals are, many gods are even fully animals so at least in their appearance uh, as we see Uh, similar is case with the harappan seals the animal motifs on almost every seal if i am not mistaken except for maybe uh, very few exceptions uh, same is present in the musical tradition and the uh, the, uh, the the 
in the making of the, uh, the in the design of musical instruments i'll show you some pictures very interesting ones see uh, here is a very popular indian instrument quite old as well rudravina uh, as we know it and this is a snake literally a snake Uh, this is uh, toss again uh, see how realistic it looks it's like a real peacock even they have used uh, feathers from real peacock in it now here is a tanpura in the uh, shape of a multi headed snake um, a snake and uh, multi headed uh, uh, the art is present in harappan seals also you have one animal and uh, you have multiple heads emanating from the from the neck and each belong to different animal and all kinds of things same we see in our religious uh, iconography where we have multi headed gods uh, having um, different heads of a different animal uh, that the other one here is is a sarinda and a bird uh, 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 shape of bird is attached to it now yals we all know in uh, chennai i'm sure more than me you understand these these instruments uh, this is a wind instrument uh, shaped like a snake and an anthropomorphic human head connected to the, in the in the opening uh, side of the that that instrument so there is a human uh, face here but the instrument itself is like a snake now <clears throat> this is another very old instrument mentioned in very ancient literature like mahabharat and all kachapi veena uh, see like a real tortoise so uh, when the when i understood that harappan archaeology has uh, little scarcity of evidence at least related to music um, i started with iconography in mesopotamia to see that whether uh, there is some resemblance in the designs and the instruments so now this is a impression of a seal from uh, aldi dynastic period 2 uh, here you can see the animal musicians playing and here is the harp very similar to what we see on the harappan seals the arched harp and it is being played by a musician uh, probably wearing animal costume and it's an equid now i will not get into the debate whether it is horse or not but <clears throat> something like that and you can also see there is a another musician playing this clapper this is a clapper now clappers are very interesting instruments at least for indian uh, mu mu musical traditions because we have clappers of all shapes and sizes from simple to sticks uh, or curved sticks like this even people use stones uh, there are elaborate decorated uh, clappers with jingles on it uh, kartal uh, even that is a clapper which we which is be, uh, which is played in th uh, tal as as tal in uh, carnatic music and also in uh, hindustani music it is uh, clappers are very uh, prominent part of folk music and they are all called kartals uh, interestingly because it is it is uh, because of the the function they play in the musical uh, in in the musical performance they replace the hand clap kartal that is what they do clappers replace the hand clap so that is why all of despite having variety of characters and uh, manufacturing styles and different sounds to them the function they perform in music is that now uh, here now when uh, you must have seen that bull shaped instrument in the in the video now most uh, mostly people think of that another famous bull lyre from mesopotamia i'll come to that in a moment but this is another seal from uh, an early dynastic period itself and found in the royal cemetery of ur here you can see that instrument in its full glory real like a real animal that is what we see in our uh, in the, the indian tradition of zoomorphic musical instruments like a real uh, animal and again we see clappers here again clappers here clappers here and in the upper register it is uh, probably they are having some party <laughs> this is the the famous uh, bull lyre from uh, again from royal cemetery of ur now this is an interesting specimen because you see we see this these indian traits to it but we also see a very uh, prominent mesopotamian style in the uh, the overall styling of the instrument which uh, makes me think that probably this is an example of uh, amalgamation of both the cultures and uh, as we we have seen other, other evidence also that we have found uh, beads like that where the beads are made from harappan material it is manufactured using technology of harappa 
and but they have the styles they have the designs they had were not common in harappa but found, commonly found in mesopotamia so just like uh, those trade items harappans were probably making musical instruments there in mesopotamia for the uh, the clientele there so they were serving that clientele and or maybe uh, the the cultures got amalgamated so much over the period centuries they they were trading with each other the iconography on i will not go into that it will go very deep but iconography which is present here not uh, very clear in this picture but there are four register all of them show motifs that which are very common to harappan archaeology there is uh, uh, on the first register there is uh, this master of animal uh, figure then there are animal musicians playing animal headed instruments and all that is there but uh, i'll move ahead uh, as i was saying if all these instruments we are seeing in the seals uh, there are many more like that which are very similar to indian traditions but uh, on its own this will not tell you from the, probably there is an exchange but the direction of the exchange cannot be ascertained by uh, on its own if the musical instruments are similar although it is it's not very easy for musical instruments to be very similar because uh, they are inventions musical instruments are not found on trees or something somebody invents them so whoever invents it uh, he would he would keep its name in the language that person speaks so if these uh, instruments really reached uh, mesopotamia from india then do we find their name registered there we can read the uh, mesopotamian script and uh, it is all deciphered and there is a lot of literature available on that because this is a peculiar quality that musical instruments have when they travel to other places uh, their names go with them uh, it's a very small uh, thing but how significant some small things can be we will see in a moment uh, like harmonium for example harmonium is played in in india everywhere and everyone calls it harmonium harmonium is not an indian instrument <coughs> it came from europe very recently and even a completely uh, illiterate person in english will still call it harmonium so that is uh, because the name of the instrument is a, like a technical term and when a person comes from somewhere outside and playing some instrument you go and ask him what you are playing and then he'll tell you the name of the instrument what he has given or he knows and that's that is the name which becomes popular in that other place also for example violin and the uh, cellos and violas guitars all the western instrument which are played in india are called they have the same names we don't have the other any indian name or any in any indian language for them so if uh, these instruments actually travel to mesopotamia did their name go with them so let's get into that but before uh, going into that i would uh, quickly go through what were my criteria to find out a, a positive result uh, the the terminology should be not only similar uh, in in its um, in its sound phonetically but also semantically that means there it should mean exactly the same or very similar within the same context it should be verifiable completely that uh, uh, like there should be generally no need to invoke some proto roots and create some unattested combinations using them and uh, so th these hypothetical occurrences were deliberately kept out of the out of this work like for for easy example if a word just sounds indian and may be created by combining these two indian uh, terms uh, w was not considered a positive in uh, in positive result in this case on top of that the phonetic variations obviously there will be some phonetic variations because uh, the languages are too different from each other but and the scripts are very, the, the it's not just about the language but also the script what scripts allows to write uh, for example uh, i'll i'll get to that in a moment so there were patterns seen in the transformation and uh, that was also one of the criteria that it should follow similar patterns like other words if if any other are found so first of all so uh, i started with sumerian because it was the language which was spoken in mesopotamia when the trade with mesopotamia started of course it flourished later on and akkadian spread and all that happened but that at the time when trade was started sumerian was the mainly spoken language so i started with sumerian here are some of the words uh, in uh, i studied both uh, major indian uh, names of instrument uh, the dravidian names as well as the sanskrit names and the sanskrit ones showed very significant similarities and 
how significant they are please have a look now there is an instrument called dindima in sanskrit and in sumerian i found dimdim in sanskrit it means a kind of instrument and in sumerian it means a musical instrument uh in sanskrit there is an instrument called mrija and in sumerian the term was found meze both means a drum uh there is an instrument called sharkara a kind of a drum in sanskrit and sumerian it is shukarak another, again a musical instrument very important one varna varna is a rigvedic uh, term term meaning arched harp and similarly sumerian term is bana also means arched harp it's very specific as you can see uh, damru uh, and again we have seen damru in the harappan script uh, as well and, and in harappan uh, iconography also and in mesopotamia also we have found the term dimarshu both means a musical instrument mangal thuri i was talking about the uh, the the rituals and the religious practices and the marriages and child birth we have music on the see the see the name of instrument mangal thuri it is in sanskrit it means an instrument played at fe festival and we found in sumerian malgatum a musical instrument sayam thuri an instrument played at evening and in Sumerian we found sabittum a musical instrument mrityuturiya uh, an instrument played at funeral and uh, in sumerian we find mrittum a musical instrument now you can see you don't find much description in sumerian meaning because these words makes no sense in sumerian context that's the problem uh, scholars have uh, talked about it in uh, the scholars in Mes studying mesopotamia has talked about it particularly musicologists that names are not uh, uh, descriptive in sumerian they don't give description of the instrument and which is likely because if they come they came from outside of mesopotamia the 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 linguistic connection would be obviously weak then we have also have other uh, terminologies other than uh, musical uh, systems i mean other than musical instrument for example swara in sanskrit means a musical notation and in sumerian sangara means musical notation uh sharaja is another musical notation and sagida in sumerian is also a musical notation gargara in rigved it is a musical instrument a lute most likely and in sumerian we have harhar or gargar a musical instrument and so on and so forth i won't go in all this is interesting mm, uh, sindhu sanskrit sindhu is name of sindhu is the name of rag in indian classical music and there are many ragas uh, of similar names such as sindhu bhairavi sindhi bhairavi sindh sindhura and sindura bhair with very similar names but they are slightly different ragas they are not all same and of course sindhu is the name of indus river and see the list we i found in mesopotamia endu a song enduana a song endu gargar a composer again gargar is an instrument in rigved and uh, endu dugduk a chanter i'll skip this yeah i'll, I'll show this picture this is another instrument found in mesopotamia and there is a comparative sanskrit word as well but the 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 tablet through which this instrument was identified has a humped bull uh, present on that and we all know humped bull is native to south asia only and reached all parts of the world from india and here this is the tablet which uh, i helped identifying this instrument this is a kettle drum here this is the instrument like our dumdubbi the different one but and this tablet shows the ritual for the initiation of the instrument into music and the 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 ritual of the putting leather on the instrument that is what is written on it but uh, hump bull is quite evidently clear here so i was as i was talking that there were see i am a musician uh, i for living i manipulate patterns that is what i do music is all about patterns we handle complex patterns that's that is what music is and when i see a pattern uh, it is likely that i'll figure it out very quickly and that's what uh, was present in these words that there were consistent patterns uh, in the transformation uh, the sumerian uh, is not very well understood language but it, the number of consonant consonants and uh, vowels in sumerian are very less than uh, indian languages if if i compare to sanskrit uh, sumerian has only uh, 16 consonants and four vowels so there is a debate on exact number but somewhat like that whereas in indian languages we have uh, like in sanskrit 33 or 
somewhere different depending on how you calculate consonants and uh, 11 14 16 vowels so the the patterns that's what these patterns were related to that handling of the phonemes and the word structure that are not present or very rare in sumerian that is what were being replaced by something else uh, of course the number of vowels and consonant i mentioned and issues related to word structures so this is how uh, then then these patterns were so consistent that i could put it in one line formula that uh, you take the sanskrit word and you remove the these non compatibles i i just call it non compatible because they are not compatible with sumerian writing it is more to do with the writing i in i am in my understanding that the script uh, was uh, the hindrance then replace it with the closest sumerian phoneme morpheme word and the final word was rendered in sumerian i'll just give you just like some examples which will explain this apart from it, there were some other patterns i'll come to that in later on see dindima now dindima here uh, na this is half na now na is not present in sumerian but so that is the only thing that is replaced dindima dimdim rest of the word is exactly the same mrija now in sumerian you cannot have a word that has two consecutive consonant in the beginning of the word or in the end of the word here in sanskrit word there are two consecutive consonant in the beginning uh, that cannot be written in the cuneiform script so they turned into meze kola kola is a measuring unit in sanskrit i'll come to that in a moment and uh, that is found written as kil because o vowel is not present in sumerian it is very precise as you can see swara again same problem two cons uh, consecutive consonant in the beginning and that is what is replaced it became sangara another pattern which i found was uh, the clipping it is the uh, formation of the word by removing some of the uh, the segment for example we call phone uh, which is made from telephone actually and the tele is clipped or net for internet or varsity for university the uh, same phenomena is present there uh, kinnara is a anthropomorphic musician in indian tradition and we see in iconography in mesopotamia we saw the uh, animal musicians and in sumerian the, the term is registered as nara which means musician only but it is a clipped form similarly salika is a flute and it is written in sumerian as sali is ka is clipped adambara another a drum a drum uh, in uh, indian context it is written as adab again a drum and you can see the half syllables are clipped adambar the half m is clipped and of course the uh, ra in the end as i said half syllables are very frequently clipped uh, that is because they cannot write two consecutive consonant the another very interesting pattern was found which i call tum pattern this is uh, whenever there is a word which is very complicated from the sumerian point of view and it also has a chunk of uh, non compatible at the end of it then that end was always uh, replaced with tum um lum hum kinds of uh, replacements for example mangal turiya this is very complicated for sumerian to write mangal turiya is complicated they made it malgatum hiranya which means a gold uh, ornament or vessel is turned into hiryatum see here here sound is not present in sumerian that's the trouble and the turiya the entire turiya thing is complicated anya this na is not there and ya is also not there so hiryatum nepathya again tha is they don't have tha they don't have ya so it became nabihum and they all mean exactly the same by the way i am not uh, the the meaning of these are exactly same in both the languages and of course there are common patterns like isoglosses uh, from ka to ga which is present in indian languages as well or pa to ba they were also present for example very important example ajkar to alangar now ajkar means uh, it's a obscure sanskrit term which means shiva's bull and alangar in sumerian is bull shaped liar okay i'll just uh, show you few more examples and i'll move ahead <clears throat> you see the so the data was very clear but also very overwhelming at the same time uh, because there are total 60 terminologies in sumerian literature which were related to music that i could find and out of those 60 30 were very similar to indian terms now that's very significant such data gives a headache to the scholar and uh, i also got that headache for many days and um, so how this could be verified 
that was the problem that uh, number one again like iconography on its own this data doesn't give you the direction of the exchange it gives you because now now it is the similarity is quite evident it is quite clear and names of musical instruments cannot be same uh, or musical notation cannot be same randomly that's not possible it's very difficult that to in such significant quantity especially among the people who uh, talk in completely different languages so how this could be verified that verified that was my problem at that moment so uh, the hypothesis was that if this list is correct what this suggest and the kind of cultural impact it shows of course we can verify it using the supportive uh, uh, data we have from archaeology and all but still uh, in, in linguistic how can we how could we do that so if this this list was right about the impact then uh, we could we should find other terminologies which are related to harappan trade which are which were well established uh, harappan uh, articles that are found in mesopotamia for especially the uh, species of trees units of measurement uh, very important in trade uh, jewelry items uh, craft items furniture especially the ones which are mentioned to have come from meluha so if uh, so th those terminologies for those uh, items should also have some resemblance like this and should they must be following the same patterns and the formula and everything so this is what uh, we have found i'll just quickly go through that list and move ahead with the art only yeah see units of measurement obviously uh, harappan uh, all we know harappan uh unit weights are ma weight measures are found in mesopotamia and of course for trade you require units of measurement how will you do the trade otherwise or for even for the craftsmanship you would need uh, units to measure things to make things accurately particularly furniture work uh yes sanskrit word man as you can see uh and sumerian word is man exact same word it is a unit of weight this is also a unit of weight uh pana Pana is a unit of weight uh, in Indian tradition, uh, and ban is the unit of capacity uh, in Mesopotamia. P to B, I have already mentioned. We consistent. We have seen consistent patterns for that. As I already discussed, coal and keel, uh, agr and ag, both are uh, measurements. Drone is it's a it's a unit for measuring fields and dana is in Sumerian is units or unit of length so very similar and uh, as you can see drone there are two consecutive consonant and na which is exactly we see here that half r is removed and na is removed the rest of the word remains the same uh, goni to gun again o is not present na is not present. Uh, i'll go to the next category yes the woods very important one because uh, this gives us double verification uh, based on their not only in them they are mentioned for come as as uh, uh, to have come from meluha as well as their uh, natural habitat also gives us more information regarding that so this is the most famous example of uh, harappan trade that is the mess tree or akad in akkadian we call mesu mess in sumerian and in sanskrit the tree i found was meshi Meshi is a tree named Dalbergia oginensis. Now this is a very less known tree today, but uh, see, look what I found. The mess mess is in Mesopotamia. It is a tree from Meluha. Come, it is clearly mentioned. But the this uh, Dalbergia oginensis. Uh, I'll just read few quotes uh, which will quickly put us into the. Um, the field uh, the this is very pretty and useful tree in uh, and is a very valuable one in india now i am quoting 19 uh, sorry uh, 19 uh, 1881 study by j s gamble uh, the, this very famous book called, a manual on indian timbers it was republished in 1972 uh, this is a very pretty and useful tree uh, this this very pretty and useful tree is a valuable one in india the wood is much in request for agriculture implants such as plows and being tough and strong it is useful for carriage building and it's and it makes excellent furnitures this tree has so many names in sanskrit the meshi that the word meshi comes from its flower which looks like shape of face of a sheep uh, as you can see in the picture uh, 
if let me see if i can in, uh, zoom in a little bit yeah, can everybody see is it visible so this is the flower and this is the sheep yeah this tree is mentioned in rigveda as spandan uh, in the context of making of a chariot uh, it is uh, this this i found about uh, to, more than 25 names of this tree in variety of sanskrit literature uh, sendana sendandruma sendani which uh, which is derived from sendan a war chariot chariot or a car uh, akshaka akshika or akshika aksha is an axle or axis of a wheel cart or uh, beam or chariot chakrin is another name for this tree uh, chakra means wheel and nemi or nemin nemin nemi is a valley of wheel uh, or any uh, circumference or circumference or the edge of a or a rim ratha rathadru rathadruma rathika all these are all names of the same tree uh, rath is all we already know it's a war chariot or a chariot shakata is another name of this tree and shakata means a cart or wagon or car so and very interestingly it is called chariot tree in english uh, this tree is uh, native to indian subcontinent only nowhere else it is found neither in central asia nor in west asia uh, uh, its uh, wood is as we have already seen it's used in uh, is useful in variety of ways nowadays the the natural stand of this tree has gone very low so if if there is a very useful tree where you find it today and i would say nowhere because people would have actually already used that if it was useful then it was used consumed so today the natural stand is very low but uh, it has other usage like uh, uh, its bark and its uh, gum is used in medicines it is a very beautiful tree because uh, when in, when uh, in the right season it will it would shed all its uh, leaves and uh, uh, it become a full flower tree so looks very beautiful <clears throat> interestingly i have uh, uh, what i have found in mesopotamia is the harappans are mentioned as keepers and financiers of sacred gardens as i mentioned earlier and one of the term for gardener in sumerian and akkadian is uh, uh, sandana or sandanaku now sandan is another name of the same tree uh, no no it, yes not to be confused with chandan sandan or sandan it's local it's a colloquial uh, term for the same tree it came from sandan yeah and uh, its tree its leaves are trifolate and trifo trifolate designs are heavily present in harappan uh, art so uh, and in mesopotamia it is uh, very well established that mes tree came from uh, uh, harappa uh, see in uh, I, i couldn't understand the question please come again yes in english is in english it is called chariot tree in akkadian it is uh, called mesu one name is mesu in sumerian it is mes and uh, another term uh, for gardener i found in akkadian and sumerian is uh, sandana or sandanaku now uh, this tree is also mentioned in mesopotamia that they were planted in the gardens of mesopotamia that uh, i also found those records and which is obvious because the, the beauty of this tree is like that i'll show you the picture uh, see in the seen full flower in the purple variety of this tree see it is just flowers there is also a light variety of this tree where you can see the white see it becomes completely white there is another tree in the background don't look at that see this one so it's a beautiful tree and it has multiple usage yes sandan No, it's okay. I'll just uh, oh, jump to some. So I'll uh, move ahead with the other uh, part of the. So there are uh, apart from uh, these thirty musical terminologies, there are sixty uh, more terms were found that were related to all these categories. I have not mentioned. 
uh, jewelry there are a lot of terms related to jewelry one i'll uh, give only one example that is beads Uh, which was the most important harappan trade uh, uh, and found all across mesopotamia and the term there are multiple terms for bead in sumerian but one of them was hindum hindum was the term for uh, beads and there was of course other terms which had nothing to do with india or sindhu or uh, any indian language but this particular term uh, caught my attention a lot because as we all understand that uh, india has been india indian products people religions have been identified as hindu throughout the world throughout historical period uh, and it is quite uh, i would say poetic that uh, harappan beads uh, were called hindum so uh, little observations uh, regarding this data that this is quite statistically significant and it is found in bulk in the areas where harappan words were likely to be found uh, other uh, areas i did not uh, uh, take into into consideration because of the uh, strict uh, things i had for the this research uh, and just like uh, relation between harappa and uh, mesopotamia these uh, the the formula which we saw this is also like one way ticket just like harappan and mesopotamia trade as we saw because you can uh, derive sumerian word sumerian and also akkadian words from the original sanskrit word but other way round seems quite difficult because words are clipped and things are removed so if uh, kinnar become nar so that becomes very complicated that how you get the, the that part of the word back which was not present at the first place and uh, most important point is this that many most of the words are related to things that are either native to south asia or known to have reached mesopotamia through harappans for example hump bull there is a there is a terminology for hump bull that was found i have not discussed it uh, which which is obvious uh, that we would find measuring units game of dice uh, harappan uh, games are found in mesopotamia there are terminologies for that animals like monkey other and other animals Uh, which were part probably part of trade and uh, yeah this thing and all these categories uh, have words which correspond to sindhu the in music we have words that are found which are similar to sindhu in uh, trade we have found words that are similar to sindhu that is beads i have already mentioned so the to to conclude the uh, issue that uh, this data is quite strongly suggesting that there was a strong cultural uh, cultural harappan uh, impact in music and performance sphere in mesopotamia probably uh, and it was already established by early dynastic periods in mesopotamia because uh, uh, the evidence uh, most of the important evidence are from that period only of course it increased uh, the exchange increased in the later prime uh, later uh, part of their uh, their trade uh, in the well going well into akkadian period uh, and the uh, what is my ultimate uh, understanding from all this is that the cult these cultural the spread of cultural elements may have actually uh, helped perhaps greatly in spread of the trade uh, and strengthening the trade and they and even they possibly became the active contributor of the harappan trade uh, see music, uh, performing music and uh, singing and dancing is a profession like any other so is business of making and selling musical instruments and manufacture of musical instrument would be very not be very different from the manufacturing of royal furnitures and other things that harappans were uh, mentioned as supplying to mesopotamia so uh, as we saw the the mu see the music music was never uh, in our uh, context music was never studied like this and uh, we could not understand the uh, how uh, studying from this point of view can bring completely new perspective entirely new knowledge uh, so it is i would uh, th there are all archaeologists here so i would request them to uh, look into this direction that how useful arts can be in understanding the history it has been neglected a lot throughout the the, the this the historical studies thank you thanks a lot if we can I have some questions i'm willing to answer them
my suggestion is this uh, there are two personal person scholar hmm. one is uh, pathak pathak hmm. he, he was chief secretary bihar and jharkhand another was verma hmm. they did some ethnographical study of santal pargana hmm. and they compared some musical song in in santal pargana which uh, in that song they say that our ancestor came from the sapt sindhu area so uh, it will be more interesting if you visit santhal area and do some documentation of their musical festival thank you thank you thank you uh, i've been uh, the, of course there is no end to the learning new things but i've been uh, looking into tribal music uh, as you saw in the video also the in the costumes in the musical instruments because they have given me a lot of knowledge in this area and especially in the understanding the continuity of the instruments uh, but i will look more into as you suggested thank you very much yes yes it is yes it is yes, yes, yes. that's what i said uh, shakuntala jagannath music folk there i have a matsya yes which is a matsya yes the yes. other is the terracotta instrument the kathak yes. is still very rich yes they are still in practice yes of course they are yes 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 even in uh, north indian music and in folk music in rajasthan in punjab in gujarat in folk music uh, uh, vessels are used both metallic and uh, terracotta till today